StarCraft 2 is an extraordinarily versatile game with an incredibly high skill score. So it is inevitable that different leagues have vastly divergent skill levels. But even in StarCraft 2, there are some things that everyone on every level can do. Well, at least almost everyone. Welcome to 4 Levels Off. Today we challenge 4 different StarCraft 2 players in a diversity of leagues to defend a well-executed cannon rush and see how they compare to each other. Our first competitor is Ricewald. Our unranked prodigy, new to the game, he will try to convince us with his enthusiasm. Secondly, Azarel. He might represent the biggest part of the comment section. He is our all-knowing Twitch chat GM, also known as Diamond. Continuing on with Cockknight. Some people say he mastered StarCraft 2, or well, at least according to his rank. And finally, Arrokfire. Alpha X's young and upcoming talent. Close to 6k on the ladder, there's a lot of pressure on him to perform absolutely flawless. The foundation of every proper defense in StarCraft 2 is the build order. If the build order isn't tight enough, or just straight up bad, defending a well-executed cheese is going to be close to impossible. Solid timings, a well-executed strategy, and in the case of a cannon rush, building placement in particular, are of the utmost importance to survive. With that in the back of our minds, let's start with Ricewald, our unranked prodigy. He opens up with a pylon, not even close to the ramp or the natural. As a result, any cheesy probe has an easy time sneaking up on him, or might even slip past his vision completely, theoretically allowing for an unseen cannon rush from inside his main base. On top of that, Ricewald made it impossible for himself to full wall his ramp, which can be a crucial step of defense in not only cheesy games, but also against just any kind of adept pressure in a more regular macro game. Overall, not the most promising SimCity. A little bit up the ladder, we can already see a significant difference. Our diamond and our master player open up very synchronized with pylon and a gateway close to the ramp, allowing for a full wall, but not making it too easy for the opponent to trap them in their own main base. The cannon rusher would need three additional pylons to fill all gaps here. All in all, this is great positioning for the first buildings. For comparison, if you would start with the same pylon but build a gateway at the edge of the ramp instead, the protos would only need two pylons to lock you in, giving the cannon rusher free reign of your natural. However, if I had to hire an architect out of these four players, I'd have to go with Eric Fire. He really wanted to prove his GM status and started with the absolute best SimCity. Not only did he put his first pylon on the ramp's edge to give him fast vision of any potential low ground pylons, he also will be quick to spot any unusually early probes with this. This gives him a little bit more time to react and prevent any shenanigans as quickly as possible. A little side note right here is that any probe arriving at your base before 1 minute and 15 seconds usually is up to no good. Just as for the diamond and the master wall, it once again takes three pylons to fully wall this ramp, but Eric Fire's wall is superior when it comes to a more regular game, since he could build a shield battery on the low ground without building a third pylon there first. This is a beautiful and well-planned opening, moving into a mid-game. Now, the meat and potatoes of defending the cannon rush. The probe movement. The probe movement is arguably the most important skill to possess when you want to successfully defend a cannon rush. Blocking potential cannon spots and making sure that pylon walls don't get up is absolutely key in defending this hard to beat cheese. And it is here exactly where Eric fires wall already grants him an advantage. He spots the intruder as early as possible, realizes that this is most likely more than just a scout and immediately pulls four probes even before the first pylon is starting to build, allowing him to body block the third enemy pylon teeth of its cover, the cannon rusher has to start running away from a swarm of defenders, but our young grandmaster cuts off any escape paths and kills the cornered probe. At the same time, he sent one of his workers to the ramp to scout for the second probe and prevent the wall in of the main. At the other end of the spectrum, Ricewald, probably unsurprising, responds quite different from our grandmaster player. Of course he sees the intruder a little later due to the pylon positioning, but even after spotting it, well, there just is no response. He does not react in any way, shape or form for over 7 seconds, allowing the friendly neighborhood cowboy to start a whole flower bed of pylons in his front yard. After seemingly processing the shock of being cannon rushed, our unranked prodigy returns to reality and starts attacking one of the pylons, but pulling only 4 probes will not be sufficient in this case. He has to kill 2 of the pylons to increase the open surface area of the cannon, 
otherwise he will not be able to attack it with more than 3 probes at a time and this cannon will go up. He also does not chase the opponent's probe, granting it the true American freedom to do and build whatever it pleases. A little bit down the road we witness SRL's response. It is a few seconds faster, but he still allows the probe to lock itself into this very common safe spot. Our diamond player tries to make up for it by pulling way more workers and attacking two instead of just one pilot, which significantly increases the chances of killing the first cannon before it finishes. However, there's something neither SRL nor Reiswald anticipate. The second probe on the low ground. While our unranked prodigy casually pretends that there is no cannon building in his natural whatsoever, SRL at least acknowledges the threat and sends a few probes down. Every slightly competent cannon rusher will already have the cannon on the low ground tucked in a nice and cozy behind some big blue crystals. Luckily for him, he's dealing with a bit of an idiot here. Nevertheless, our diamond protal straight up ignores the invitation to attack the low ground cannon and focuses on a random pylon instead. Therefore, SRL also has to deal with an up and running cannon from the low ground. But can we really judge these guys for this oversight? If even Eric Fire, a 6k Grandmaster, does not completely anticipate this scenario, even though the Alpha X talent did indeed send a probe to the ramp to cover any kind of wall in, the natural's wide and open for the second intruder, and if the cannon rusher had just 5 minerals more, and the opportunity to cancel a building probe for an additional 50 minerals was there, there would have been a fully walled safe space right at the edge of the main base. Fate, however, was on Eric Fire's side this time, and he gets to the low ground cannon. Even with this oversight in mind, his probe movement was absolutely marvelous. Super quick response and continuously pulling extra workers, not underestimating the threat of potential cannons. As long as he keeps his probes down, as well as upstairs to attack any new cannons, he will be absolutely fine. Interestingly, there is a man who indeed anticipated the second wave. And that is Cockknight, our Masters player. Initially he spots the very early probe, already preparing mentally, and the moment the first pylon goes down, he sprints to the corner, barely blocking the third one. Of course he pulls more workers right afterwards, chasing the intruder, and this is where it really gets spicy. Realizing that the high ground is most likely secure, he starts pre-patrolling probes on the locations where a low ground cannon could be going down. So in this regard, Cockknight is ahead of everyone here, even Eric Fire. Two little suggestions though, it would have been nice to also have a patrolling probe right here so that all areas where a cannon could be tucked into a corner would be blocked. And also our masters player just returns to mining a little bit too quickly. As a result of this I almost get a complete wall on the high ground cannon as well as a low ground cannon. However from this point on once again the response is fantastic. He keeps two probes in the natural guarding dangerous cannon spots, the initial cannon rush probe gets chased to death and both side pylons are immediately under attack by a bunch of workers, not only empowering the cannon, but also opening up a lot of surface area, which most of the time is more important. Together with the upcoming Zealot, Cock Knight will have no trouble cleaning up this cannon rush. Back in Arox Fire's base, things are still not cooling down as an unanticipated third probe shows up out of nowhere and gets an almost fully walled in cannon down. Another fast worker pool and the Zealot will most likely be able to deal with this as well, However, there's a pretty easy way to completely prevent this. I like to patrol a probe at the entrance of my natural, preemptively warning me of any further unwanted visitors. Whether those be cannon rusher or just the more annoying branch of my distant family around Christmas is to be seen. As the probes are dancing the tango with one another, it is important to leverage your tech advantage into something tangible. Whether that is chronoing out a stalker, getting a robo defensively at home with a couple of batteries, or even proxying a stargate to get aggressive straight after. The cannon rush won't last forever and you need a plan to be prepared for the life after the cannon rush. Looking at the tech response out of Reiswald right here, I have to admit I really like the immediate chrono boost of the Zealot, although he's floating over 300 minerals at the same time and could easily throw down a cybernetic score. Sadly, he's too focused on the probe micro to really leverage the tech lead into something big. Even if this cannon ends up going up, if you build the cyber core as soon as you can and get enough gas, technically at the 2 minute mark, if you only pull 2 or 3 workers, you should be capable of proxying a stargate across the map. However, we see Reiswald, rather than going into the mentioned cyber core, adding a second gateway. Now, here's something of a concept applicable to not only cannon rushes, but the cheeses and defending pushes in general. Whenever you're being attacked by something, you always have to think, okay, if I do an action or build a building right now, like building a gateway, when will that gateway start helping me? 
this case, a gateway takes about 45 seconds to build. And then any unit that comes out of the gateway, even with Chrono Boost, will take at least another 15 to 20 seconds. This is an entire minute of this investment not helping you in the slightest. By that time, the cannon rush has already been decided. And thus, in this case, the gateway is not the correct call. If your initial pro pool isn't good enough and you did not leverage your tech advantage, perhaps the only thing that's left for you to do is leave. Let's see if our Masters player can finish strong and convincingly take the dub. I was very enthusiastic about his probe movement, but there are a few things that I didn't like as much. These two queued up workers could have been cancelled to allow for a way faster Cybercore and therefore a bigger tech advantage. And I also feel that perhaps one or two probes were pulled too much. Mining just wasn't enough. These two guys in the back of the mineral line are not really serving any purpose either at this point. If you know that the opponent is nowhere near that pylon, you can always pull a couple of workers if the attacking cannon rusher decides to return to that position. However, I am kind of fine with the response of only getting a zealot and no cybernetic score if you're 100% sure that you're capable of stopping every single cannon from going off, because this will basically ensure you a free win. Cock Knight with his quick pro pool, his fast zealot chrono boost on top of that, and the constant chasing of the probe is going to be the first winner of the day. As none of the cannons go up, the gateway is not going to finish either, and Cock Knight is up six workers, there really is nothing to do except to tap out for me and call GG. One leak further down in Diamond, Azarel also is too busy microing his probes, but this time not only is the Cybercore delayed, the Zealot gets started a full 10 seconds later than possible. That sets him at a huge disadvantage. On top of that, he pulls so many probes that he does not have any money to build a quick cybercore. Big issue. This means that if you do not kill all the cannons, that you do not have any advantage left anymore, because you're not mining more than your opponent, and you're not getting any type of tech that could potentially end the game. That can put you in a pretty darn bad situation when there's a cannon, and you do not even have the potential for a stalker. It is at this point for Azarel that he starts to realize that he does not even have a single way to stop any new up-and-coming cannons. On top of that, he also has no way to threaten the other side of the map, and therefore returns to his very last option. GG. In retrospect, I have no doubt in my mind that Eric Fire by far had the greatest follow-up response. He starts chronoing the Zealot immediately, and even though he does not have that much money necessarily, his Cybercore starts just 4 to 5 seconds after it could have started, which is really freaking fast. This allows our fellow Grandmaster to get a Stalker out if necessary, as well as a Stargate across the map proxy. Therefore, he's the only contestant out of the four that would have been able to start a proper and strong counterattack in case some of the low ground cannons did finish. That is really important. Furthermore, you pretty much officially end the cannon rush once the cyber core is done, since the resulting stalker can snipe down any further probes and cannons cannot be easily protected with pylon walls anymore. Once the stalker joins the zealot in roaming around, preventing any cannon from going up and the resources are once again being mined, Arak Fire smells victory. And the cowboy is very well aware of the fact that this game is completely over. GG gets called and the impressive young grandmaster is the second winner of the day that holds this cannon rush rather easily. I absolutely love some of the ideas that these guys had in their mind and I'm glad to see that everyone was at least vaguely aware of the fact that they had to pull a couple of probes to defend the cannon rush. However, in the lower leagues we did see that the follow-up plan and the probe movement itself weren't all that great and actually kind of lacking at certain points. Interesting on top of that is that Cock Knight had the greatest probe movement out of all players. He was a bit slow to start, but his movement in denying the low ground was even better than the Grandmaster player. So you can see that certain people are just slightly better at certain things, even if they have a lower skill level. However, as the overall response, I think Eric Fire came closest to what is perceived to be perfect. A quick pro pool, a good follow up, and just a plan for the future. Now that we have seen these guys do it, I will tell you what I believe is best. I think pulling six to seven workers to try to deny cannons initially while chrono boosting out a zealot and getting a quick cyber core is absolutely the optimal play. At the same time, with your scouting probe, you want to build your second pylon across the map for a proxy stargate. If your zealot can't kill all of the cannons on your side of the map, you will just send it across the map as well. This will force a cannon defensively out of your opponent, and on top of that will not allow him to potentially cannon your proxy stargate. If you execute this semi-properly, it is extremely difficult to lose to a cannon rush. It kind of has been figured out at the highest levels. There are of course multiple ways to roam, however, my way just gets you there the fastest. After analyzing the different approaches across the various skill levels, 
I think there is one thing that we can all agree on. And that is that the game always ends with, what was it again? Ah, right, a glute game. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Bye bye.